Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm now starting to do my videos for the June session, May June session of 2019. This is the first one, and um, I'm starting off by answering the questions from the January 2019 IALC 3-4 paper for the A-level guys. And this is the paper that I gave them as their mock exam, and I'm kind of like in the middle of marking the mock exams right now. Um, so I thought I would go through these questions as I'm marking so that I can you know, look at their mistakes and try to see the common mistakes that some of them are making so that maybe they and others can learn from those mistakes. So I'm just going to go through the questions one by one. Um, I'm going to start with question number one. Um, Express 7 sine 2 theta minus 2 cosine 2 theta in the form r sine 2 theta minus alpha. Okay, so when we have a question that's um, in this form, okay, we have to use the addition formula, okay, to be able to express in, in this particular way. And <coughs> so we can say that 7 sine of 2 theta minus Two sine, two cosine of two theta is equal to r sine two theta minus alpha in brackets. Now, what we need to do is split this up in a f using the addition um, formula, which I have on the next page here. Okay, so we can see that we've got here the identities. Okay, and we here have sine uh, a plus b equals or is identical to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Okay, um, or if you have a, a minus, you also can use the minus. So I'm going to take this identity, okay, and use that one, which you should. Most people would have memorized it by <coughs> by doing a lot of practice. But in case you haven't, you can then. In case you haven't memorized it, you have it in front of you in the formula sheet. Okay, so oops. So here we have the formula. Just uh, make it a bit better. Okay. So using this formula, we can split this sine two, th two, 2 theta minus alpha in this form. Now there's a minus between these two angles, so we're going to use a form which has a minus underneath it, sine A minus B equals sine A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. So in this case, our A is the 2 theta, and our B is the alpha. So that's sine 2 theta, cosine alpha, cosine 2 theta, and sine alpha. All right, and you're going to have the minus. The minus, we're going to have the minus. So if we split this up, you have R, sorry for that. We have R, okay, and then you're going to have times the sine of, you're going to have 2 theta and cosine alpha, and you're going to have minus, and again R, because I will multiply both of these, <coughs> cosine A, which is cosine 2 theta, times the sine of alpha. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the coefficients. These these two are identical to each other. So if you look at the one on this side, you have 7 sine 2 theta, and here you have r, si r sine 2 theta. Um, okay, so sine 2 theta and sine 2 theta. Okay, so this sine 2 theta here and this sine 2 theta here. Okay, and this cosine 2 theta here. And then you have a cosine 2 theta there. So if these two sides are identical to each other, <coughs> then what we know is that sine 2 theta times r cosine alpha must, the r cosine alpha must have the same value as the 7, because 7 sine 2 theta must be identical to r cosine alpha sin times sine 2 theta. Okay, they're identical. So the coefficient of sine 2 theta on this side must be identical to the coefficient of sine 2 theta on this side. So what we can say is 7 is the same as r cosine alpha. And similarly, on this side you've got the cosine 2 theta, and here you've got cosine 2 theta. The coefficient of cosine 2 theta on this side is 2, 
the coefficient of sine cosine two theta here is r sine alpha. So you're gonna have you're gonna have two. We don't include the minus. Okay, we don't include the minus. You have two. Okay, so we have <coughs> seven sine two. Sorry, we have minus two cosine two alpha, and minus r cosine two alpha two theta sine theta. Sine alpha, sorry. So we have minus two cosine two theta and minus r cosine two theta sine alpha. So the coefficient of cosine two theta here is two, and this coefficient of cosine two theta here is r sine alpha. So we can say that two, two is the same as r, two is the same as sine r times sine alpha. Okay? So now what we can do from this is we can use these to find the value of alpha and the value of r, okay? And the way I like to do it is as follows. If 2 equals r sine alpha, if, if 2 equals r sine alpha, then we can say that sine alpha is equal to 2 divided by r. And if 7 equals r cosine alpha, we can say the cosine of alpha is equal to 7 over r. And from this, I could make like a right angle triangle. Okay? I could make a right angle triangle and work out what the value of r and alpha is. So if I call this, since this is a right angle, if I call this alpha, then the sine of alpha is 2 over r, and the cosine of alpha is 7 over R. So opposite over hypotenuse, 2 over R. Adjacent over hypotenuse, 7 over R. So from this I know that R, okay, R is equal to the square root of the 2 shorter side squared. So 2 squared plus 7 squared. Okay. Now that's equal to the square root of, that's 4 plus 49, which is 53. Which doesn't break down into... Um, anything simpler and you can check that in case you're not sure you can just take out the calculator and you can check that so you can say the square root of 53 okay and it doesn't give you any simpler third form so that's your answer now the question says here give the exact value of r okay give the exact value of r so you've got to be very careful to read the question don't wind it to 3sf or two decimal place or anything you leave it in its exact value which is in its third form and then so that's the value of r. So r is equal to root 53. So that's the answer. F that's one part of the answer. But we have to also find the value of alpha. And the alpha we have to give to two decimal places. Now, if some of the students read this question, okay, um, and they read it incorrectly because they just gave both of them to two decimal places. But it says very carefully, very care um, clearly give the exact value of r and give the value of alpha to two decimal places. Some people just read... A like the beginning and the end of a question, and they forget what's in between. So give the value of r, value of alpha, two decimal places, and they just, you know, without reading it carefully, then they'll lose marks. Because if it says give the exact value of r, and you don't, you'll lose marks. Okay, so make sure you don't leave yourself open to losing marks. And then, of course, we can find what alpha is. We know that this is 2 is the opposite, and 7 is the hypotenuse, so we can use the tangent ratios. So we can say tan of alpha is equal to 2 over 7. So alpha is equal to inverse tan of 2 over 7. So we can say inverse tan 2 over 7, which gives you in 15 point, let's see if in degree mode, yes we are, um, they want it in degrees. Do they want it in degrees? We have to make sure. Yes, they do, because this is in degrees. Okay, so it's 15.945, so 15.95, so let me just, 15.945, so alpha is 15.945. It's always best to write it in slightly more accurate form than you need on your working, and you can then say that's equal to 15.95, 15.95. Okay, that's your answer in degrees. So here we have our two answers, R and alpha. Okay, so that's the answer for part A.
Um, and then I'm going to answer part B now. It says, hence solve for um, theta between 90 and 0, or between 0 and 90, the equation 7 sine 2 theta minus 2 cosine 2 theta equals 4. So if we look at what we just transformed, we've transformed exactly what they're asking us to um, solve. 7 sine 2 theta minus 2 sine uh, 2 cosine 2 theta. Okay, so that we already have transformed it into this form. Okay, um, so yeah. Um, actually, before we actually move on, we should really uh, finish this off properly because it says here, if you look at carefully, it says express 7 sine 2 theta minus 2 cosine 2 theta in this form. So really, in the end, we should express it in this form. So we should say in the end that 7 sine 2 theta, okay, so we should really say that... Um, 7 sine 2 theta okay minus 2 cosine 2 theta okay is equal to and we have r which is root 53 root 53 times um, sine of sine of 2 theta minus the angle we found to two decimal places 15.95 degrees so that's like the final answer that we have to show okay writing out expressing in the form that's needed okay that's how we should finish that part of the question and part b now what we want to do is you want to use what we've um, s done to solve this equation. So we know now that root 53, that's this part, the 7 sine 2 theta minus 2 cosine 2 theta can be expressed in this form. Root 53 sine of 2 theta minus 15.95. Okay, we can leave our answer in this two decimal place form because our answer has to be in degrees to one decimal place so we can use things to a higher degree of accuracy so I don't need to go back and get the more accurate form although it probably there will be no harm in you taking the more accurate form which is 15.945 that's probably even better for you but there's no problem if you don't so we want to know when that's equal to 4 we want to find what values of theta between 0 and 90 solve this equation okay so what we're going to do I'm going to divide both sides by root 53 so the sine of 2 theta minus 15.95 is equal to 4 over the square root of 53. And therefore, 2 theta minus 15.95 15.95 is equal to shift sine of 4 over root 53. Now, before we proceed, what we need to do what we need to do before we proceed is to change our limits because we have our theta it says from zero and it has theta and it has 90 degrees we need to change it so it matches okay what this looks like here so I've got to multiply I have to make it say 2 theta minus 15.95 2 theta minus 15.95 degrees. So I've got to multiply 0 by 2 theta then take away 15.95 so I've got to catch all the angles between minus 15.95 and then I've got to do 2 times 90 which is 180 minus 15.95 so 180 minus 15.95 is going to be 164.05 let me just confirm that just in case I made an error there. So you have 90 times 2 which is 180 minus 15.95 which gives you 164.05 yes okay so now I have to catch the angles between these two limits okay I shouldn't ca have any angles that are um, outside of those limits so now when I put this now into my calculator inverse sine of 4 over root 53 
So inverse sine, 4 divided by the square root of 53. Okay, that's going to give me, whoops, let me just do that properly. All right, you're going to get your main angle, okay, which is 33.329. I'll write it like that. So you have 2 theta minus 15.95 equals, and we got, what was it? 33.328 dot dot dot. So 33.328, 33. 33, sorry, no. I need to restart this soon. So 33.328 dot dot dot. Kind of on like that. So that's your main angle. Now with the sine curve, the other angle is given by 180 minus this value. Okay, so you also need, let me just do something here. Let me just um, store this value. No, I have to press store, and I'll store it in in A. Okay. All right. So that's stored in A. Okay. So anyway, so let me get uh, the value 33.328, and I have to do 180 minus that. 180 minus my answer, and that gives you 146.671. 146. 0.671. Now both of those are in our range. Okay. Now to find the other values that might be in the range, I have to now add and subtract 360 to both of these values because the sine curve repeats every 360 degrees. So for when you got sine, to find the first value, you press inverse sine, you get the calculator value. Then with that value, you subtract from 180. Okay. You subtract this value from 180 to give you the other value which shares the same sine ratio. And then from those two, you add 360 or subtract 360 from and to, to and from those to find the other values. Now, as you see, our range is from minus 15.95. So if I subtract 360 from this, I'm going to be way below the range. And same with this. If I add 360 to both of these, I'm going to be outside of our range. So these are the only two values which are in our given range. So now what I can do is I can just find what theta is by taking each of these values. So I know theta is equal to... I can then rearrange this. I have to add 15.95 to both of them. So I have 33.328 plus 15.95 divided by 2. And my other value will be 146.671 plus 15.95 divided by 2. So that should give me the answer. So I'll do deal with this one first. So I'm going to add 15.95 to it and then divide it by 2 and I get 81.3106 so 81.310 or 81.310 dot 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 and for this one, okay, to if you want to go back to the original value okay, you can just press uh, shift, recall and A. That was the value that I had stored away in there. So I can add 15.95 to that, 15.95, and then divide that, press equals, then divide by 2, okay, which is 24.639, and then let's see how they want our answer to be, give your answers to one decimal place. So you then say that's equal to 24.6 degrees and 81.3 degrees, 81.3 degrees. And there we have answered part A and B and part C I'll put in the next video.